Okay, I'm going to illustrate how you could determine the current payment and current yield of a bond by using Excel's Goal Seek functionality. And here's the problem given right there. Okay, a bond matures in six years and is currently selling for $980. The bond pays interest annually. It has a par value of $1,000 and a yield to maturity of 8.5%. What's the bond's current yield? Okay, now, we don't know the answer yet. So here's how I set this up. I put the par value at $1,000. I set the interest rate at 8.5%. That's the bond's effective interest rate. We know that because they told us the yield to maturity is 8.5%. Now, we don't know what the payment is. They haven't told us that. So I arbitrarily put in $100, and that would mean the face value of the bond was 10%, right? 100 divided by the par value would be 10%. Six periods left, and then you would calculate the present value. So here's the present value. So I put in the 8.5%, right? Six is the number of periods, the payment, 100, and future value, 1,000. Now, both of these are entered as negatives because of the way time value of money functions work in Excel and online calculators and physical calculators. Uh, it assumes that outflows are negative and inflows are positive. So we have to e either assume that we're giving up the payment and the future value to get the present value of the bond or the other way around. And I did it the first way where I'm going to show the payment and the future value is what we're giving up in exchange for getting the present value of the bond. And when we do this and hit OK, right, hit the OK button, the present value is 1068. Now, we know that what we really want is this number to be 980. And you could do this by, you know, just trial and error. We could make this 90. And, oh, you know, we're getting closer and keep going that way and see if you can get to the right number. But I'm going to set that back to 100 and show you how you can do this with Excel's Goal Seek. Now, to do that, I've got to slide this down. And I'm going to show you we're sitting on the home where you usually are. And I'm going to slide this over because we're going to select data. And then we're going to set, select what if. Now I'm going to slide this over a little bit more. We're going to go what if and choose goal seek. All right, now that I've done that, I can move this back so that you can see everything on the screen. All right, so what does it says? It says, what cell are you going to set? Well, we're going to set that cell right there, D7, to a value of 980. That's what the present value should be, right? D7, 980. By changing what cell? Well, we're going to change cell D5. And then we hit OK. And if I've done this right, It'll come back with an answer. And sure enough, instead of by trial and error, it's very quick. It said the target value is 980. I've got you an answer. We hit OK. Sure enough, there's the present value. The formula looks right. We could call it up. It now has, you know, the rate. Here, let me put this where you can see it, I think. Well, this is going to be hard to at this point. Um, but the rate is the 8.5%. The number of periods is 6. Okay, it calculated the periodic payment to be $80.61, which would tell us that in this made up problem, the stated value of the bond was, uh, you know, 8.061%. Okay, and the future value of 1,000. All of that's in there. We hit OK. That's the present value. Um, then the last part of the question says, what's the bond's current yield? And we really needed to calculate the payment in order to do the dividend yield because dividend yield is calculated simply by taking the periodic payment over the present value of the bond. So the dividend yield is the $80.61 that we calculated must be the payment to get us a, cur a bond currently selling at $980. Okay, that's how you solve this problem, everyone. Thank you.